All right, welcome back to Tube Da DaVinci. Today we're gonna to talk about how you can use your iPad or tablet to control your JD5 or G7 or GH5 and some of the really cool benefits of doing so. So stay tuned. All right, the first thing you want to do is get onto your camera and turn on the Wi-Fi mode. So I actually have a quick function set here that it's F10. I can just click on that and it goes into Wi-Fi mode. But if you haven't set that up, you can also access it from the menu. So in the main menu button, on the, in the third tab under Wi-Fi, you would go to Wi-Fi function, new connection, and remote shooting and viewing. And that will create the Wi-Fi network that your iPad can connect to. So let's do that now. Okay, so the next step is on your iPad, you'll go to settings under Wi-Fi. Now, currently I'm connected to my home network. So I'm gonna switch that to this G85 network that it's created. Now, if you have a G7 or a GH5, the naming might be different, but the, the same step should apply. So I'm gonna join that network. Okay, now at this step, I would launch my image app and it's here, Image App. You can search for Panasonic Image App on the App Store and install it for Android and iOS. Launch the application. And now, voila, now you see me. And what you're seeing is that the camera is on and I'm currently able to record and see what's going on. Now that's pretty cool. The setup is really easy. And once you set that up, you're good to go. Now, if you disconnect it for any reason, you're gonna have to reconnect it again. Now at this point, I think what I'm gonna do is switch over from this iPad view back to the camera view. So let's do that now. If I hit record, okay. So now actually I think I'm, I'm recording, I'm live and I'm back on my camera. So the, the quality should be a little better now. But you know what's really cool is you can do everything here that you could, you could almost do everything you could do normally on the camera. For example, I can adjust my focusing point. I can move into the background and you'll notice that I should be pretty blurry now. Um, I can move it to the foreground or over on the left. And I can bring it back to me. So you can drag the focus box around and focus on wherever you want. Now this only applies if you have a autofocus lens on your camera. If you have a manual focus lens, you're out of luck on that one. Now the next really cool thing is you can adjust the aperture and the shutter speed as well. I'm shooting a 24p video, so I have my shutter set to 1 50th of a second. But let's go ahead and change that. So right now, let's try something. We're gonna try to get the maximum depth of field. We're gonna open up the lens as much as we can here. So now, we have the aperture wide open at 1.7, uh, f1.7. And now you can, you can clearly tell that there's too much light coming in. So let me turn the shutter speed faster to, to adjust for that. Now, when I do this, you should probably notice that the depth of field behind me is changing. And I can do all of this while I'm recording from the iPad. And that's what makes this so cool is that you can get set up somewhere, leave your camera alone, and if you have the ultimate rig, like we mentioned in our videos, where we have an XLR microphone set up, I can be moving around, I can move back, and I can still make all the adjustments that I need just from the application here. So now what's really cool is that I can just take my iPad, I can move around, and even if now I should be out of focus, because again, I wasn't focused there before, I can drag, come back into focus and now I should be back in focus and I can move around and have that comfort and peace of mind of knowing that I'm always gonna be able to make any adjustments that I need to. Uh, maybe I wanna go back to a more standard video. So I'll go back to 50, uh, I'll go back to 1 50th of a second for the shutter speed and I'll readjust my aperture to, to accommodate. Looks like it might be a little underexposed. So let's go to F2.8. Okay, so there we have it. These are all the kinds of cool things you can do with the iPad or any tablet. And this might be a really helpful feature for you if you're doing videos where you're kind of busy, you're showing how to do something, either maybe if you're making food or doing a DIY project or makeup or anything really, this would probably really help your workflow to be able to record and to quickly and easily make any adjustments that you need to, check your levels, make sure everything looks good. Another one of those really great perks that this camera offers you. Now, as far as limitations go, the one limitation that I found with this setup is that it doesn't show me the levels, my audio levels. So my audio is being fed in from my Tascam and again, I have an XLR microphone. Now on my Tascam, I have levels, but my Tascam has a setting for the output level to the camera. 
and I can't gauge that. So looking at the application, I have a lot of control over everything else, but I can't see my level. So, so the one feature request that I would recommend Panasonic for a future release would be to include audio levels on this. And it doesn't have to be super real time. I just need to be able to talk for a little bit and make sure that I'm not peaking. And that's really all it takes and it wouldn't be that hard to do. And hopefully that comes in the future. Now my experience with these kinds of software Wi-Fi tools is only limited to Sony and to Panasonic now. But I will say the Panasonic is far better than the Sony was. For one, I had a Sony A7, the first generation, and it didn't allow you to record video from the application, only still images, and that drove me crazy. I believe they fixed that with the A7S II and the A7S II and the A7R II. The Panasonic layout is really good. The frame rate of the video is not too shabby, and um, I find it really helpful. When I'm doing my woodworking videos, when I talk about finishing my kitchen, it's gonna be really great to be able to just set my camera up, have my mic stand, have it uh, right in front of me, and to be able to make all my adjustments and hit record and pause and play often. What I found is when I switched to using the iPad, my video files are smaller. So instead of having like 15 minute recordings where I only have like two minutes of actual really valuable stuff where I'm setting up, now I just hit pause and play and record and I can keep my file size small. And for those of you guys who are new to 4K video, you know how huge these files can get. The G85 codec is actually pretty impressive. It's pretty small and pretty efficient with its compression, but it's still a really big resulting file size. And by having the iPad, I can hit pause, I can play, record, and I can make smaller files that are more tuned to exactly what I'm doing. And I can take the time to hit stop, walk away, set up the next shot, and come back and just hit record without having to mess with anything else. And with a quick look, and I drag up my finger, I can focus, I can make sure that I'm back in focus, I can look at peaking levels, and it makes it really easy. So I hope that helped you guys. And that's a rundown of the software and all the kind of settings and all the things you can do. You can adjust ISO, white balance, all of it. But again, you saw the, the app, there's quite a bit of control. There are probably are some things you can't do, but for what I use it for, I found that it works really, really well, and it does most of what I need really efficiently. So hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, like and subscribe, share the video, and we'll catch you guys next time.